It's easy to show that the edge chromatic number of a graph satisfies the inequality the greatest degree is less than or equal to the edge chromatic number, since the delta incident edges on a vertex must have different colors. And we've seen it's possible for the edge chromatic number to be even greater. Consequently, Wiesing's theorem, discovered by a Ukrainian mathematician named Wiesing, uh, is a remarkable result. For any simple connected graph, the edge chromatic number is either the greatest degree or the greatest degree plus 1. Since it's clear that the edge chromatic number must be at least as great as delta, we only need to prove that it has to be less than or equal to delta plus 1. So suppose we have a graph that's not delta plus 1 edge colorable. Let h be a maximal in number of edges subgraph of g that is delta plus 1 edge colorable. And consider some vertex u in h and some edge uv1 that's in our graph but not in our maximal subgraph. So here we'll represent that by drawing a dotted line between two vertices that are connected with an edge in g but not in h. Since the degree of u will be delta or less, but by assumption h is delta plus 1 edge colorable, there exists some color not present among the edges of u. For convenience, we'll call this color 0, and we'll note that u does not have an edge of color 0. So, remember uv1 was an edge in our graph, but is not an edge in our maximal subgraph h. So if v1 has no incident edge of color 0, then we can restore uv1 and give it color 0, and this gives us a larger, in number of edges, graph h prime that is still delta plus 1 colorable, which is a contradiction. We note that this is going to be true in general. If u and w are joined with an edge of color p but lack a common color q, then we can change the color of the edge uw to q, the omitted common color, and then restore our edge uv1 and color it p. So this means that v1 must have an incident edge of color 0, but since the degree of v1 is at most delta, and h is delta plus 1 colorable, then there's some other color not present at v1. We'll call this color 1. This color must be present at u, again, since otherwise we'd be able to color uv1 in g with color 1 and obtain a delta plus 1 coloring. Now consider the edge from u with color 1. This goes to some vertex v2, and again the two vertices cannot omit the same color, so v2 must have an edge of color 0. And assuming that u has additional edges, we note that there must be a third color present at u that can't be present at v2, and in a fit of creative inspiration we'll call this color 2 which is assigned to the edge u, v, 3. And we can continue this process until one of two things happens. First, we might go through all the edges incident on u. And if that happens, we can cascade our colors. u, v, 2 switches colors from 1 to 2, u, v, 3 gets color 3, and so on, and our last edge, uvn, gets color n, and we can restore edge uv1 and assign it color 1, getting a larger graph with a delta plus 1 coloring, which is a contradiction. The other possibility is we might get to a vertex where a previously omitted color is also not present. If it's color 0, then u and some vertex omit a common color, so we can use the color 0 for the existing edge and the original color for a restored uv1 edge. 
And again, that's a contradiction because it produces a larger graph with the same chromatic number. What if it's a color we've previously omitted? As the following argument gets a little complicated, let's consider a concrete case. Remember, concrete never hurts. So suppose the edges incident on V4 omit a previously omitted color. By construction, it can't be color 3 since that's the color that joined U to V4, so it's either color 2 or color 1. We'll assume it's color 2. Now, again, we can cascade and join UV1, giving it color 1. UV2 has color 2. UV3 has color 3. And we'll disconnect U and V4. This gives us the graph with the same number of edges and still a delta plus 1 edge coloring. Now consider the subgraph consisting of the vertices adjacent to edges of color 0, the omitted color at U, or 2, the repeated omitted color. We note that U itself has degree 1, since UV2 has color 2, but it has no edge of color 0. V3 also has degree 1. Remember, it had an edge of color 2, but in our cascade, this was transferred to vertex 2. However, it still has an edge of color 0. And finally, V4, where we got the repeated omitted color, has degree 1, since it has an edge of color 0, but no edge of color 2. Since every other vertex has degree 1 or 2, there are three possibilities. There is a path from U to V4 that does not pass through V3. There is a path from U to V3 that does not pass through V4. Or there is a path from V3 to V4 that does not pass through U. And at this point, you've seen enough graph theory proofs that you can probably predict what we're going to do next. Suppose there's a path from U to V4 that does not pass through V3. The edge from U must have color 2. In fact, it's going to pass through V2. The edge to V4 must have color 0. But we can interchange the colors and still have a valid delta plus 1 edge coloring. And note that we've removed the edge of color 2 from U, so now U and V3 have no edge of color 2 and can be joined by an edge of this color. Meanwhile, U and V4 were originally joined by an edge of color 3, so we can just restore this edge, which gives us a larger graph with a delta plus 1 edge coloring. But that's a contradiction because we assumed that we had the largest such graph. Similarly, if the path from U to V3 does not pass through V4, or if the path from V3 to V4 does not pass through U, then that's a homework problem. So, if our graph has edge chromatic number greater than delta plus 1, then the maximal subgraph with edge chromatic number delta plus 1 isn't maximal. We can always expand it. So it can't exist, which proves Fiesing's theorem.